I've been working with Mary off and on for 10 years. I think her whole program of uh, presenting works and how they're made is uh, really fabulous. It's great for the audience, but it's also really great for the artist to kind of rethink what they're doing and uh, present it to an audience. Personally, it's enabled me to uh, work on artistically different challenges, but also to be able to have those discussions and be able to kind of open the door to discussing what goes on behind uh, making the work. I trust Mary when it comes to this. I think she really knows what's happening in, in the dance world, has her finger on the pulse, and she recommended uh, Pam, and I just saw a few things on video. I said, yes, this is the person, immediately. Feminine appealed to me as a dance piece, um, I think because of the connection with women in the arts. Uh, I have another file card piece called Duras, about Marguerite Duras, and that also I thought would function really well as a dance piece and um, the history and legacy of female dancers is incredible. When I was 15 I saw Margot Fontaine dance with Nuriyev. It blew my mind. I will never forget it. And I've always really been interested in ballet and dance and worked with experimental dancers downtown, Pouquet, Sally Silvers. So it all kind of came together through knowing Mary this program came about and this piece works well for dance. It's a beautiful inspiration, um, but it was also very daunting because he has this list of like, you know, amazing women, and I'm like, ah, oh, really? Okay, how am I going to do this? And so, I sort of just read about it a lot and listened to the music, and then I kind of just um, put it away. Like, so I just kind of had it, and it's it, you know inside me as I work, but it's not um, uh, something that I'm working on in this dance. Uh, Femina is one of a series of pieces that I've been working on since 1983 or 4, which I call file card pieces, which are very um, labor intensive and they have a lot of detail. It takes a lot of time to work it all out. I start with uh, picking a dramatic subject. In this case, it was women in the arts through the ages. And then I do a whole series of uh, researches about that, watching videos, listening to music, reading books, looking at art, going to museums to get inspiration. I actually started with the idea of making four different dances to the four sections, but that hasn't really worked out. <laughs> it's really one dance, but, but that's how I started. And I think because the music was 34 minutes and I was like, what am I going to do? How am I going to go at this? I think it was just a way of tricking myself into just starting and not being um, worried. Or like, where, how is this going to end? Or what is this going to be? And so it just got me to start. And then I collect a bunch of ideas and impressions on file cards. And then eventually they get fleshed out into musical moments. And then they get ordered in some kind of a way and then I write a whole series of additional notated music to go along with different sections. And I choose a band, I go into a studio, and then over the course of you know four, five, or six days of 10 hours a day, we start at the beginning of the piece and work our way through one section at a time. And the way I'm working with the music is different in different areas. So at times I'm acknowledging the music, at times I'm ignoring the music, and at times I'm creating new circumstances out of the circumstances that are happening in the music. So they're related to what's going on, but um, kind of my interpretation or the dancer's interpretation. I try to draw the most I can out of each and every player and get them to do the best that they do and uh, try to get special moments out of them. And those special moments which often involve improvisation or accident or uh, divine uh, mysticism. Uh, special moments are captured uh, in the recording studio. There's really hard parts of the music. There's text, there's French, there's, you know, beautiful crackling sounds against beautiful melodic uh, landscape, you know. So um, sometimes we change with the changes in music. Sometimes we let it be as a backdrop. Some composers uh, feel that when they write a work, um, 
It's a concert work and it should not be then interpreted on the stage in any way. Um, I'm a little more loose about that. A lot of uh, the work I do can be, um, I think, put in a variety of contexts. This, some works I feel would really lend themselves to dance and sometimes the file card pieces I think work that way because there's uh, already kind of a dramatic structure there and things are very are moving kind of in this very kinetic way. There is a narrative quality to it that um, I was really interested in because I'm sort of I'm very interested in kind of the using loose narrative in my work so that's sort of how I connected me and my work with the music. Um, it was also a really interesting piece of music for me to use right after I, uh, a piece that I just made to Schubert, so it was a total change, um, and it's very freeing. It's not something that's um, always written and then performed. Sometimes it's something that happens, and that magical moment, which is a strong part of improvisation and, say, the jazz language, um, is best captured on tape because then you get that feeling that you can't really get anywhere else. I think there's a tension in the piece that's um, kind of goes between confined and free. And I think that came from the music. I think, I don't know if I would have dealt with that if I was using a different piece of music. So that is really exciting to me. So what I do with these file card pieces is to cr try to create a series of moments that are very special in themselves that relate to the dramatic subject, so the whole piece is tied together in some kind of an organic way. And each moment is something rare.